This is the 2018-19 Boards and Commissions Annual Report. We start with breaking news tonight. An active pursuit of a trash monster on the streets of Santa Monica. We go live to Skylar Worley in Skyjet Turbocopter 1. We've been following the trash monster for about 10 minutes and it's just incredible. Barreling down the sidewalk, completely out of control at about three to four miles per hour with no signs of slowing down. Pursuers have fallen back and are just monitoring, but if you're out there in Santa Monica, be aware of this dangerous situation. I'm Skylar Worley reporting from the Skyjet Copter 1 for the BNC Report. Thank you, Skylar. Scary situation there. We begin our Boards and Commissions report with an update on Santa Monica travel and tourism. Shouldn't this be breaking news? Uh, what? Uh, uh, sure. <clears throat> breaking news tonight with travel and tourism. Thank you. In 2018, tourism continued to be a substantial economic driver of our prosperous community with visitor spending injecting $1.94 billion into our local economy. $58.5 million were contributed to our city's general fund through the transit occupancy tax, while the retail tax of visitor spending contributed an additional $14.5 million. Research shows international visitors stay longer, spend more money, and use public transportation. Santa Monica travel and tourism programs focused on growing this visitor base with strategic efforts in key domestic and international feeder markets, as well as two new emerging markets, China and India. To help provide a vision of our destination experience, we conducted a destination perception study in partnership with the city of Santa Monica. See you at the beach, Walter, and wear your bikini. Okay, thanks. We now move on to news concerning the Architectural Review Board with our reporter who's on location. Hey, I want to do the breaking news thing too. What? Look, you all can't do breaking news. I mean, we don't want to be like all the other newscasts, right? I guess not, but I'm still treating this as breaking news. <sighs> okay. Note to all other reporters, just assume your report is breaking news. Thanks, Walter. The Architecture Review Board reviewed projects to bring new housing and active retail to the downtown, mid-city, and Bergamont areas. We also helped improve the public experience of the city through revitalized restaurants, sidewalk design, and activated public spaces. Now, back to the non-breaking news in the studio. Hey! Thank you for that report. Next up is the Landmarks Commission where our reporter Dolores Sloan is live at Carousel Park. I am here standing before the friendly dragon in Carousel Park. Here generations of children and adults have climbed while visiting the nearby Landmark Pier. Carousel Park itself was awarded landmark status by the Landmarks Commission this past year after nearby business owners, the Cultural Landscape Foundation, and the Santa Monica Conservancy joined to initiate an application. Also in 2018, the commission helped establish a new 11th Street Historic District. The City Council agreed with its recommendation to designate selected early 20th century bungalows on the east side of 11th Street and the north side of Arizona Avenue. 2018 saw an increase in community ownership of Santa Monica's historic preservation process. More owners continued to file applications to landmark their properties. Come down to Carousel Park and give the friendly dragon a try. Back to you, Walter. Thanks, Dolores. Excellent reporting. Now let's take a quick look at the weather in Santa Monica with our weathercaster, Tad Cooler. Tad, what's it like out there? It's cool. Thanks for that on-the-spot weather update, Tad. We'll get the full forecast later in the report. Moving on, our Arts Commission reporters are live at Bergamot Station. Thanks, Walter. Bergamot Station is starting to come alive again. Mike, 
Absolutely. Over the past year, the Arts Commission has worked with Worth Real Estate Group to revitalize the entire site. Tenants can once again feel confident in Bergamont remaining one of the premier arts destinations in the city. Yes, new long-term and short-term arts tenants will be coming here all year. The Arts Commission has helped initiate a new future for the Airport Art Studios with 18th Street Art Center as the studio's new management. There will be more professional development, public activities, and continued affordable space for the artists to do their work. There's also the City Services Building. The Arts Commission approved a new addition to the city's public art collection in the new City Service Building behind City Hall. Yes, it's a three-story high living mural that changes throughout the day with movement of the sun. And it stays lit at night. You'll be able to see it from Olympic Drive and the police station. There will be new art inside the building on the first floor as well. When it comes to the arts, there really is a lot going on in Santa Monica. Well, if you know where else there's a lot going on, Ed, it's in my stomach. I, I'm starving. Well, that's definitely not breaking news, but where should we go to eat? I think we should eat healthy. I think you're right. Tacos! tacos. I want tacos. <sighs> Moving on. Our library board reporter is live on the scene at the main library with this report. Oh, are we on? Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, gee, thanks, Walter. That was such a good book, I just couldn't stop. Uh, the Library Board eliminated library fines for children this year to promote youth reading and responsibility and ratified a technology master plan to offer the best technological solutions and assist lifelong learning in all our facilities. We drafted enhanced rules of conduct and provided support services to people experiencing homelessness and mental illness. These enhancements help protect the right of all library patrons to a safe and enjoyable library experience. And the Library Board supported our very professional library staff so that for the ninth year in a row, we were named a five-star library. That's something for all of us to be proud of. Back to you, Walter. Nine years in a row, definitely impressive. Speaking of impressive, we head to the Ken Edwards Center for this report on the Commission for the Senior Community. Thanks, Walter. In 2018, the Commission for the Senior Community took action in representing the concerns of all older Santa Monicans. The Commission co-sponsored a town hall at Ken Edwards Center with the mayor, the city manager, and the chief of police. Members of the Commission took an active role in Coast, traveling from one end of the city to the other on a Surrey bike distributing questionnaires to seniors. The Commission took an active role with technology, collaborating with the Santa Monica Public Library and the Older Adult Task Force to host the third annual Tech Fair for Older Adults. We also represented the senior community in the Mobility On Demand Every Day, or Mode Launch, with Big Blue Bus and helped seniors sign up and download the Lyft app. For BNC Report, I'm Barry Engelman. And I'm Katherine Keatsman. Now back to the studio. Thank you. We now head live to City Hall for this report on the Commission on the Status of Women. The Commission on the Status of Women helped create a groundbreaking ordinance for hotel workers that includes protection from all forms of sexual violence by providing panic buttons and other measures to enable hotel workers to report misconduct and remove themselves from dangerous situations without fear of retaliation. This includes training for hotel workers to ensure they have the knowledge and skills to protect their own rights and safety. In partnership with the Santa Monica Police Department and the Santa Monica Chamber, we collected more than 240 handbags filled with toiletries for the annual Handbags for Hope campaign. We also partnered with the City Attorney's Office in a Domestic Violence Awareness Month display at City Hall, distributing our new wallet size resource guide that contains vital resources for women and families. For the past nine years, we've worked with more than 40 partners to arrange events for Women's History Month. Reporting live from City Hall in Santa Monica, I'm Sylvia Gazarian. Great reporting there, as always. And for another great report, let's talk to Nancy and Lori to get the latest on the Disabilities Commission. Last May, the Disabilities Commission hosted a very successful art exhibit to celebrate Mental Health Awareness Month at the main library. The commission made its positions on the urgent need for employment opportunities in two op-ed pieces featured in the Santa Monica Daily Press and the Santa Monica Mirror. 
the City Council presented a proclamation to the Commission for its successful campaign on Disability Employment Awareness Month in November. As far as transportation efforts go, the Disabilities Commission worked to help launch the new mode lift program with our friends at the Big Blue Bus. Not only that, but the long-awaited beach chairs have arrived. People with disabilities will be able to borrow them and head to the waves. Great report. So Nancy, is there a lot happening there right now? Not really. I don't really know why we're even reporting here because there's really nothing noteworthy happening at the moment. Well, that's normal. We like to have our reporters on the scene 12 hours after an event happened. For crying out loud, why? It's newsy. Oh, good, oh, good grief. grief. We head back now to City Hall, where Michael Soloff gives us a report on the Housing Commission. The City Council adopted the Housing Commission's recommendations for how to spend restored affordable housing funding to create new affordable housing for, among others, Santa Monicans who are homeless and for families who already live or work in the city. The City Council approved the Housing Commission's recommendation to expend up to $2 million per year to expand the locally funded Rent Subsidy Pilot Program, or POD, to help hundreds more of Santa Monica's extremely low-income seniors stay in their longtime homes. And the Housing Commission worked with staff to develop guidelines for this next phase of the program. The Housing Commission also began work on recommendations to create new affordable housing in even more cost-effective ways. Back to you, Uncle Walter. Thanks, though you aren't my nephew. And now, this report from Bill Parent on the Social Services Commission. Most of our work has been around homelessness. We've been closely involved with city staff and nonprofit service providers around the issues of outreach, shelter, and housing. Three of our commissioners are active members of the Steering Committee on Homelessness, which the Social Services Commission helped to initiate. The Social Services Commission has also been active in mental health, early childhood and family issues, the well-being initiative, and foster parenting. Back to you, Walter. Excellent report. And now, let's get the latest update on the Rent Control Board from our reporter in the field. The board eliminated property tax related surcharges entirely for new tenants who move into their units on or after March 1st, 2018 and for tenants in units on properties reassessed due to ownership transfer or major improvements on or after that date. In May, the board limited the amount of property tax related assessments that owners may pass through to other tenants to no more than the actual calculated amount for the property, $35 per month or 4% of the rent, whichever is less. In August, the board clarified that rent controlled units may only be used to provide long-term permanent housing for individual human beings, not corporations. The board adopted a 2018 general adjustment rent increase of 2.9% with a maximum increase of $60 for all controlled units. And breaking news, this month is the 40th anniversary of rent control. Reporting live from Santa Monica Rent Control Area G, this is Carolyn Tarosis. Thanks, Carolyn. We get an update now on the pursuit of the trash monster on the streets of Santa Monica. Skylar Worley is live in Skyjet Turbocopter 1. As you can see, the trash monster is still on the loose, menacing people on the streets of Santa Monica. It's moving about three miles per hour. So dangerous. Watch as it barrels down the sidewalk. Oh my gosh. Just it's so close there. I mean, just no one is safe. No regards for human life from this trash monster. Skylar, I just can't believe what we're seeing. You can see just how dangerous trash on the streets is to everyone. The pursuit continues. I'm Skylar Worley reporting live from Skyjet Copter 1 for the BNC Report. Thank you, Skylar. We'll continue to monitor that dangerous, scary, horrific, terrifying situation as it progresses. Moving on, let's hear from Chuck and Charlie, our reporters covering the Building and Fire Life Safety Commission. The responsibility of the Building and Fire Life Safety Commission is to make recommendations to City Council on the triannual adoption of the State Building and Fire Codes 
and make recommendations on local amendments to both of these codes. The Building and Fire Life Safety Commission also listens to appeals to decisions of the building official and the fire marshal and conducts hearings on policy and technical issues involving specific provisions. In 2018, the Commission did not meet due to lack of code updates or appeals. However, we encourage community members to join the city's pool of interested applicants as the Commission is in need of state licensed architects, building contractors, access specialists, fire protection engineers, and civil and structural engineers. We need your expertise. Very informative. Chuck, can you give me a sense of the mood on the street right now? Not really. Oh, Charlie, could you? Nope. Okay. Next up, we'll go live on the scene for a report on the airport commission. The city completed phase one of the runway shortening to 3,500 feet from 5,000 feet, resulting in a more than 80% reduction in jet traffic at the airport. Following the runway shortening, the city will remove the excess pavement no longer needed for aeronautical uses and replace it with grasses. The airport commission gave significant input on the airport's new minimum standards and updates to the leasing policy. Exciting things happening with the Airport Commission. Now, let's get an update on our weather with Tad Cooler, who's still on location. Tad, how is it where you are? Still cool. He's not the highest paid weathercaster on the West Coast for nothing. Lots of good info. For even better info, let's go live to John C. Smith for a report on the Recreation and Parks Commission. Hi, we're live at Memorial Park, where the Recreation and Parks Commission is working to add field space as part of the Memorial Park Master Plan. Joining me now is Lori Brown, Vice Chair. Hey Lori, what can you tell me? Hey John, you know we're getting a ton of community input on, as we update the new Parks and Recreation Master Plan. It's going to guide our park system for the next 20 years. Hey, one second Lori, breaking news. California Coastal Commission has just approved the new Civic Center multi-purpose field. Yes? What? Approved? What That's huge. You know, we're also working to make the beach bike path better and safer, especially near our pier. And we just opened the new North Beach Children's Playground, the city's third universal place to play. Anything else? Oh, yeah. We're working to create new parks and community gardens and definitely increase our park safety. That's our focus. Thanks, Lori. Live at Memorial Park, John C. Smith, Commission Chair. Wow, there's so many fun things to do in the parks. I can't wait to get out and play and have a kite. Oh, what? I'm sorry. Great report. And now, let's go to Judy Abdo with the latest on the Metropolitan Water District. The city updated its Sustainable Water Master Plan in 2018 that outlined the strategy for the city to achieve water self-sufficiency by 2023. The plan was approved by the City Council, making Santa Monica the first city in Southern California to meet nearly 100% of its own water demand. The city is implementing an innovative sustainable water infrastructure project that captures dry weather runoff, storm water, and wastewater that will be treated to produce purified water to add to the city's local groundwater supplies. Also, the city will construct a new advanced water treatment facility in the Olympic well field. Reporting from SM1, I'm Judy Abdo on the latest on water in Santa Monica. Thank you. Some great stuff to look forward to in the years ahead. I want to take the chance to let viewers know that this Boards and Commissions report is being fact-checked live. Let's take a look at our state-of-the-art fact-checking lab to see the team hard at work. As you can see, they are using the finest technology. Back to work, everybody. Back to work. Moving on to our next report, let's get the latest on the Urban Forest Task Force. The Urban Forest Task Force heard and made recommendations on five tree removal appeals and four tree planning appeals from Santa Monica residents and or developers in 2018. The task force approved updates to the following appendices of the Urban Forest Master Plan, tree pruning, tree preservation, tree risk assessment, and parkway landscaping guidelines. The task force approved changes or additions to five segments of the species designations appendix of the Urban Forest Master Plan researched and proposed by the species subcommittee. 
In addition, the Species Subcommittee finalized the first stage of tree planting on the Olympic median from 10th to 17th streets to turn the median into an ecological corridor. Back to you in the studio. Awesome report. How did we get that guy? Like, he's really good. I mean, right? <laughs> wow. There is something familiar about him, though. I can't really put my finger on it. Anyway, let's get to the latest now on the Task Force on the Environment. We advised the city on key initiatives and environmental policies, including the city joining the Clean Power Alliance and selecting the default product for all residential and commercial customers to 100% renewable energy in an effort to reduce carbon emissions. We also advised the city on the disposable food service wear ordinance, expanding the prohibition of single-use plastic food wear for prepared food distribution in an effort to reduce plastic pollution. We contributed to the creation of the Electric Vehicle Subcommittee and expanding the EV charging network in an effort to reach 300 chargers by 2020. Back to you, Walter. Excellent reporting. Wait, I'm getting word now. We have an update on the trash monster, which as you know has been loose in Santa Monica. Our own Skylar Worley is live on the scene with the latest. Someone's gotta stop him, Walter. I'm going in. Skylar, you can't, no, you can't do that. It's too dangerous. This is bigger than both of us, Walter. I hope she knows what she's doing. Wait, we, we seem to have lost Skylar. We've lost her. Let's take a moment of silence for Skylar. Okay, now let's get the latest from the Planning Commission. Thanks. The Planning Commission continued to support the city's commitment to developing new housing and managing congestion by approving 11 housing projects in 2018 that almost exclusively create housing and mixed-use buildings along transit-rich corridors, such as Lincoln, where we are. And those housing projects we approved total 510 units, of which 45 are deed-restricted affordable units. The Commission also updated standards in the zoning ordinance to ensure that accessory dwelling units, or ADUs, are accessory to the primary residences on the parcel to protect the character of single unit residential districts. These amendments are consistent with recent changes to state law intended to address barriers, streamline approvals, and expand potential capacity for ADUs. The Commission also guided priorities for increased walking, biking, transit, and also vision zero action strategies which are to eliminate all traffic deaths in Santa Monica and new directions in transportation technology including directions for electric vehicles and even autonomous vehicles. Back, Back to, to you, Walter. Walter. Skyler's okay? Skyler's on the ground? Let's go to Skyler! Now! Let's go! We'll do it live! Let's go! I finally caught up to the trash monster after a chase lasting dozens of minutes. He's been caught, and we're going to clean him up. I can change. I can Actually, we're going to have to have you leave the city because, as you know, Walter, single-use plastics are now prohibited in the city of Santa Monica. For the Boards and Commission's report, I'm Skylar Worley, on the ground, bringing it to you live. I'm so relieved Skylar is okay and the trash monster is getting the help he needs. Next up, we have a team of reporters all over the city at various locations to give us the Clean Beaches and Ocean Committee report. The Marine Park Alternate Water Supply Project is nearly complete as the park waits to receive highly treated runoff from the City of Los Angeles' Penmar Park 2.7 million gallon storage tank. Once final water quality standards are set, treated runoff will replace the use of potable water for irrigating the park's fields. Debbie? Thanks, Troy. The Clean Beaches Initiative, or CBI project, constructed a 1.6 million gallon stormwater and brackish groundwater storage tank just north of the Santa Monica Pier to catch the runoff from the downtown area and local groundwater along the coast. The CBI project is a multi-benefit project that harvests lots of water drops, like me, along with a variety of pollutants, helps protect the Santa Monica Bay, and reduces the use of potable water. Reducing the use of potable water is a step towards the city's goal of water self-sufficiency. Back to you, Walter. Wait, aren't you guys in the same parking lot? Next up, 
We have our reporter from the LA County West Vector Control District. The control of mosquitoes per by preventing them from breeding is a primary goal of the Vector District. The district continues to do this on a daily basis. For example, 534 underground drains with an overall treatment area of more than 35,000 square yards are routinely treated throughout the district pre preventing mosquito breeding. Sentinel chickens placed throughout the district are routinely tested for West Nile virus. Mosquitoes gravitate to these birds, and if bitten and tested positive, then additional preventative measures can be taken in the impacted areas. Let's hear from the chickens. How many infections were there in Los Angeles last year? In LA County, there were 47 infections in 2018. Ah. Is this more or less than last year? This is down from last year. Bah, bah, bah. How does it feel to be on the front lines of prevention? Uh, uh, no comment. I guess the birds don't want to comment right now. Hey, what, what's going on here? The chickens don't give interviews. Get, get out of here. Our reporters will do anything and talk to anyone to get the story. Exciting stuff. Now let's head downtown with a report on Downtown Santa Monica, Inc. Downtown Santa Monica, Inc. and the city have funded a joint effort to assess the promenade's infrastructure needs and see how people use the space. The effort is part of the promenade 3.0 revisioning process to make sure it remains a popular community gathering space for the next generation of Santa Monicans. As part of the promenade 3.0, Downtown Santa Monica, Inc. created the experiment to breathe new life into the northern block of the promenade by adding movable street furniture, elevated grass patches, colorful decorations, a reading library, and games. Our first beautification and branding project on Lincoln Boulevard included the installation of colorful and protective light pole wraps, featuring our social media hashtag, hashtag DT Santa Monica. The wraps not only help visitors find their way and serve as a warm welcome to the downtown, but they also prevent vandals from posting stickers and graffiti. In conjunction with the city, we are working diligently on solutions to our region's homelessness crisis. As part of those efforts to eliminate homelessness, DTSM Inc. has collaborated with the Salvation Army and Food Not Bombs to provide free meals to homeless individuals in a safe and secure location, where social service providers are present to help people get the support they need and to get them off the streets and into housing. And during the holiday season, we collaborated with a local property owner and the Santa Monica Police Department to create the Promenade Holiday Substation. Julia Ladd reporting from Downtown Santa Monica, Inc. Back to you, Walter. Great report, Julia. As we move on, wait, evidently I'm being told we have an urgent weather situation right now. Let's go to Tad Cooler, who is reporting as a, wait, as a hurricane is making landfall here? This hurricane came out of nowhere. The last tropical cyclone that hit Santa Monica happened in 1939, back before they even named storms. I'm having trouble standing. The winds are just pounding. Tad, let me interrupt you. I, I see people sitting behind you relaxing. You do? Yeah, and they don't seem to be having any trouble with the weather at all. <sighs> I'm so bored. Nothing ever happens here. I mean, it's Santa Monica. The weather is always perfect. I understand, but we shouldn't fake it. People will mistake us for the Weather Channel. We continue now with the latest from the Personnel Board. The Personnel Board is an advisory body to the Santa Monica City Council and Human Resources Director on matters pertaining to personnel administration and also acts as a quasi-judicial review body for hearing employee appeals of certain disciplinary actions. In conducting its business, the Board considers the rights and interests of city employees, the city administration, as well as the citizens and taxpayers of Santa Monica. Because of the confidential nature of our business, what I can report is that the board conducted 10 meetings and reviewed 50 job classifications and 20 outside activity requests in 2018. Back to you, Walter. Thanks, Joy. Great report. Now we'll head out to the pier for this report on the Santa Monica Pier Corporation. The Santa Monica Pier Corporation had a successful year in 2018, including the reimagining of the Twilight on the Pier concert series. We also introduced several new campaigns, Winter Campaign, Wonderland on the Water, and the Valentine's Day Campaign. Now let's hear from Gray Bright at the other end of the pier. 
We expanded the paddleboard races to the Pier 360 Summer Kickoff event and we helped develop Pride Month, celebrating families of LGBTQ+. Also, new market research has shown that residents and tourists alike want us to change the shape of the Ferris wheel from a circle into a line. Over the past few hours, I've been helping construction crews. I think you'll agree, it looks amazing. It's now, it's now the Ferris stick. As you can see, our fact checkers have come in and determined the last few things in that report to be, well, not so accurate. And Gray is obviously not at the pier. But Christopher is, so let's head back to him to get more about the Santa Monica Pier. I'm not at the pier either. Wait, what? But we see you there. I'm standing right behind you. I've been here the entire newscast. What? Well, that's all we have for this Boards and Commissions report. From all of us here, good night, good luck, and have a pleasant tomorrow. Well, you know where there's also a lot going on, Ed? It would be in my stomach because I am starving. Well, that's certainly not breaking news, but where should we go? Tacos? That sounds healthy. I think you're right. I think we screwed this up. <laughs> he did! I hope the monster gets us. That's all from Bergamot. It's cool, still cool. It's cool, still cool. It's cool, still cool. I'm your girly Skylar Whirly, I'm your girly Skylar Whirly, my hair is curly cause I'm a girly. I think this is this is Penny and Henny. Hen this is Henny and Penny. Chickens don't seem to have a comment. You're damn right, no comment. Henny and Penny don't give interviews. Get get out of here. Back to you, Walter.